I thought um, just to help some people out because uh, obviously I've been doing a lot of research. Um, my doctorate was actually on leopard uh, behaviour, ecology and conservation. And uh, for those of you who didn't know, I have actually finished. I did become a doctor, which was really cool last year. Um, so one of the things that we actually found during my research was this strawberry leopard or erythristic leopard. So I thought it might be quite nice to actually show you um, what the whole genetics thing is about. Because we've obviously got black leopards and black jaguars, white white lions, white tigers, and as I say, now this uh, strawberry or wreathristic uh, leopard. So it's, we think they're all controlled by the same sort of thing, except for the jaguar, actually. So a lot of people ask, you know, where does the panther come into it? Well, the black leopard, black jaguar can be called panthers. So it's usually just a melanistic animal. So I've got some pictures to show you quickly. So we've got a black leopard here and a black jaguar. Uh, on screen so I thought if you could see them side by side now they actually have just a quite a high amount of melanin in their fur so the leopard on the left so that is the leopard you can still see the rosettes because it's it sat out in the sun so you can still see the rosettes um, just coming through there and the rosettes are quite small so the leopard is found in Africa and Asia but if we have a look at the animal on the right that is a black jaguar you can still see the rosettes but the rosettes are much larger I'm hoping that's coming out clearly for you um, so yeah they're much larger and jaguar tend to have a spot in the middle of the rosette which obviously you can't see as clearly on the black jaguar. So these are, you, you're seeing the rosettes because they're in the sunlight. When you see them uh, in the shadow, then they will look completely black. So it's just a, a high level of melanin, that's black pigment in their fur. Now with the, uh, with the jaguar, uh, it's believed it's a dominant gene that uh, causes the, the black jaguar, but in the leopard, it's actually a recessive gene. Now I'm just gonna quickly show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to just use uh, the whiteboard outside and just show you a quick genetics lesson. So don't switch off. Some people don't enjoy genetics. But basically, if we just draw a square, uh, a table, if I stand this side, that'll be easier. Won't I? So if we say uh, the, the yellow leopard, uh, it has a dominant gene. So that's the S. Uh, so this is the, the male, so if I hopefully draw the symbol of a male, everyone will know that. That's the universal symbol for a male. So if this is the father and he is a yellow cat, so he's yellow, normal coloured, so he might have this S. So if I draw a large S, that means it's a dominant gene and a small S means it's recessive. So the dominant gets shown and the recessive doesn't. So if he's yellow, so this is what we call a carrier. So this is the dominant gene and this is the recessive gene. And males and females will carry two genes for each thing all the time. So this, this is the norm. So then if we have the female down here and she's also yellow and so she's a carrier. So she's got the big, so I'm calling this the spots, I could call it yellow, it's just it's just a symbol basically. So she's got this dominant gene and this recessive gene. So if they have cubs, then they could have one cub that has uh, this dominant gene and this dominant gene from the father and the mother. So to make uh, a whole new animal you have to have the two. So that's the dominant. So they're going to be yellow. They're not a carrier, they're just yellow and whatever they pass on to their offspring will be either one of those. If we go across and we've got, still got this gene, so it's a big S for the female and a little s from the father, this cub will still be yellow but it will be a carrier because it's got a little s. And the same with uh, the father here, so if we, if we take the mother again, so she so the mother gives the little s and the father gives a big s, then this is the carrier but still a yellow cat because we've got this big S. But the interesting one comes in when the two little S's get together. And if those two come together, that could be the black leopard because it's two recessive genes. If it's got a dominant gene with it, it gets masked. So that's why we'll still see the yellow. 
So that hopefully might make a little bit of sense when we talk about the dominant and recessive gene. If both animals don't have this, so if they have the big S's, it will still be, so you can see big S, big S, big S, big S, big S, big S. So you'll constantly get yellow cats and no carriers. Even if you get one of the adults carrying, so we still have the big S's there, so this cub will still be completely yellow and this cub will still be completely yellow, but this cub will be a big S and a small S from the mum, so that will be yellow but will be carrying and the same, so big S and little s, so that cub will be carriers. So it all depends on the dominant gene and this recessive and that's where the black leopard comes in. So if they have the two recessive genes, one from the father, one from the mother, and it comes together, then you get a black leopard. And we believe that's how we get the strawberry leopard. So I'm going to show you the strawberry leopard because it's quite amazing. And to be honest, very, very rare. It could, it could have occurred because of a mutation in the genes and possibly because the, the gene pool shrank then you might get more carriers of this gene and that's why we might get more of this strawberry leopard uh, in a population. So if I quickly show you the picture of the strawberry leopard, there we go, so there it is. And if I actually shrink that a little bit and I'll put, put it against Oh, I've got to bring up a normal leopard. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> but hopefully you've got the normal leopard uh, from shadow, actually, in your sights. Then we have this sort of pale colouring, sort of a rusty orange, and then the black spots are actually brown. So these spots, or the rosettes, are actually brown in colour. So it lacks black pigmentation. And because there's only 18 animals in the world that we've actually been able to find, that is possibly uh, quite a rare colour variant, but as I say, interesting that it's actually come out in so many numbers within my study site uh, in the Leidenberg and Northwest, that one population of leopards. So it is a bit worrying, but we can't say for sure if it is recessive, but the mother, uh, I did have the picture there, of the mother, there she is. So this is the mother, she's actually normal coloured, and I totally forgot, so that was an another fail because I did actually have a yellow leopard but there she is so that is the mother uh, there oh so she is normal colored if I can get it bigger for you so yellow with the black spots so that's why w we believe it's a recessive gene because she is normal colored ah and he has uh, Tristan's actually been able to reposition himself so he can see our normal coloured leopard in the form of shadow, so enjoy.